love, peace, and grace from the eternal heavenly Godhead, including the almighty, merciful, and loving God, the Father, the Father of lights, the Father of spirits, our Elohim, our Abba, Yah, his holy son Emmanuel, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, who is God manifested in the flesh and God with us, and the Holy Spirit of truth, the Roi HaKadosh, who is God moving God's end time saints to live a holy life, pleasing to God the Father and his son, Yeshua Emmanuel. Love, peace, and grace be multiplied upon God's saints on the biblical and commanded Lord's Day, the Lord's holy seventh day Sabbath, which identifies God as the Creator who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. Happy Sabbath, Sabbath blessings, joyeux Sabbath. À tous mes frères et sœurs dans le Christ, qui aiment le Christ Jésus-Christ et saint ce commandement, y compris son quatrième commandement du septième jour du sabbat. Je vous salue tous et je vous aime beaucoup. I love you all. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, amen, and amen. On the biblical Lord's Day, God's holy seventh day Sabbath, which is permanent and holy. Let's give glory to God with Psalm chapter 117, the smallest or shortest Psalm in the Bible, which says, O oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. At a rally in the state of Minnesota, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump was testing the waters when he spoke about faith. Notice the reaction from the crowd and then look at Trump's reaction. But I thought last night as I was speaking to this incredible group of evangelicals and a lot of others of faith. It's, uh, well, you like that, don't you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That means our country's coming a long way. Because you put faith back, you put religion back into our country, it's going to be a much better place. Tell you that. Did you notice what Trump said? After the positive reaction from the audience, Trump said, you put faith back, you put religion back into our country, it's going to be a much better place. Notice the crowd's loud applause after Trump made that remark or that comment. Trump's supporters are yearning for Christianity, their brand of Christianity non-biblical Christianity based on shared Roman, Catholic, and Protestant beliefs. Trump mentioned that the U.S. will be a much better place when Christianity is back, as American Christians are truly fed up, and that goes also for European Christians and Canadian Christians as well, as American Christians are fed up with the silly, sexual perversions being advertised by the current Biden administration, or should it be the Harris administration? A much better place, says Trump. A much better place for who, exactly? Definitely not for the blue or green or purple-haired feminists, that's for sure, and or their LGBTQ proponents and supporters who absolutely hate Christ, they really do, and his holy written word. The LGBTQ crowd are truly demon-possessed. They are fully committed anti-Christ and children of disobedience. They truly are. But there's still time for them to repent of their sins and of their evil ways. 
lest they prefer to follow the example of the Sodomites in Sodom and Gomorrah. In Genesis chapter 19, verse 24, when God sent fire and brimstone over the Sodomites, over the citizens of those two cities. So please pray for those who are feminists, who hate men, for those who are part of the LGBTQ crowd to turn to Christ before it is too late for them, as per Revelation chapter 22, verse 11. Don't hate these people, even though they hate you. Love them and pray for them. Under a Trump administration, it will be a much better place for his supporters, for religious organizations, Sunday-keeping Christians, and especially the 501c3 government-registered tax-exempt Sunday-keeping Protestant churches who are voicing their loud voices of support for Trump along with Roman Catholic groups like Catholics for Catholics. None is happier to see this happening, this growing interest in faith and religion, in particular fallen Christianity or non-biblical Christianity, than the Pope at the Vatican, who knows all too well that the brand of Christianity that has been practiced by Protestants in the United States and that is being promoted by the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025 is based on Roman Catholicism. Notice again how Trump reacted to the audience's approval of Trump speaking about faith. Again, he said, you put faith back. You put religion back into our country. It's going to be a much better place. Or will it? Is it going to be a much better place in the United States? Or will the United States turn into a certain form of theocracy, into a union of church and state with the 501c3 government registered Sunday keeping churches made in the image of the Vatican beast getting political at Washington DC, the capital of the second beast in Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 16 the United States. The following compilation of video clips shows the main players, the main actors who are involved in this Christian nationalism movement in the United States. Notice that, that they have one thing in common, all of the people that you will see in the video clip, they are all Roman Catholics. Now, before I show you the video clip, I just want to make something clear. I do not support the man who is speaking in the background, making his comments. I do not support his ministry. I just believe that what he says, showing the link between Mr. Roberts, as you will see in the video clip, and Mr. Vance and the Pope, showing the association between these three men, is clear and correct. So again, the only reason why I'm showing this video clip is simply because the man who's speaking in the background, as you will see, is showing the link between Roberts, Vance, and the Pope. Here's the video clip. This is Kevin Roberts from Project 2025. All roads lead to here, to Rome. We're talking about also Project 2025 is a Sunday law coming, my friends. There it is. And what are they saying? That they, churchmen, are going to influence the next president's administration. In a pluralist society, if you reinstate blue laws, then you would have to outlaw sports teams on Saturday in order to accommodate Jews. So how, how, do, you, how do you kind of, you know, thread that needle? Well. So so we're, not obligated, we're not obligated to satisfy every, every group under the sun. The man said, the ideal for America is to implement Catholic social teaching. Common good. Don't forget that. Common good. Not my words. Direct quote from the Pope. Common good. What is common good? Religion should not be confined to personal conscience. What is common good? You give up your individual rights, 
for the majority. What is common good? Enforcing Sunday worship by law. That's common good. Common good, says the Pope. Not my words or someone saying this off the Pope. The Pope's words, common good, red words, is much more than the sum of individual interests. It moves from what is best for me to what is best for everyone. In the video clip that we just saw, the men in the video clip have again all one thing in common. They are all Roman Catholics or Sunday worshipers. The president of the Heritage Foundation is Kevin Roberts. Mr. Roberts is Roman Catholic. Thus, as head of the conservative Heritage Foundation think tank organization, which under Paul Dan's drafted Project 2025, Mr. Roberts wants to apply his Pope's Roman Catholicism through Project 2025 with the purpose of impacting U.S. government policy and American social policy. Let it be known that Mr. Roberts is also very close friends with a certain J.D. Vance, Trump's Republican vice presidential candidate for the upcoming presidential elections in the United States on November 5th, 2024. Here's a video clip showing the close friendship between Roberts and Vance. Okay. We have confirmed news that Senator Vance is the vice presidential running mate. You will see a broad smile on my face because you may know that we're good friends. I will offer two comments about that. The first is the entire list of names considered are great men and women, truly, truly, all of them friends of heritage. There among them, though, was someone that privately we were really rooting for. And he's just been named the running mate. Both Roberts and Vance are again Roman Catholics. Both men want to implement their Roman Catholicism in the United States. Again, we have to understand this. Roberts is the head of the conservative think tank organization, the Heritage Foundation, which wants to see a Republican president sitting in the Oval Office to implement Project 2025's policies and overall platform. And then you have his close friend, James Vance, who stated that he wants to apply his Roman Catholic beliefs or social teachings in U.S. government policy and also in American social policy. That's precisely what Roberts wants. That's precisely what Vance wants. And that's precisely what their boss, the Pope, wants. Trump's selection of Mr. Vance as his vice presidential candidate was no coincidence. Trump selected Vance to please the boss, his Pope, who is the ruler of the world. Quote, why is it the Pope has such tremendous power? Why the Pope is the ruler of the world. All the emperors, all the kings, all the princes, all the presidents of the world are all these altar boys of mine. The Pope is the ruler of the world. So says a priest, D.S. Phelan on June 27th, 1912, in the Western Watchman, which is a paper that was published in St. Louis, Missouri, United States. That's one big reason why Trump's selection of Vance as his vice presidential sidekick or candidate is no coincidence. Vance converted to Roman Catholicism in 2019. Again, he supports Roman Catholic social teaching, but the Pope calls it common good. He calls it the common good, which is spoken of in the man-made catechism of the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church. As Christians, individually, you being a Christian, watching this video, watching me speak, 
myself as a Christian, individually, we are responsible for a relationship with Christ. It's between you and Christ. We look up to Christ as the Son of God, as God manifests in the flesh, as our Savior, as our King, as our Redeemer, as our great Creator, as the Creator who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, as per God's holy seven-day Sabbath commandment. When we have our petitions or our issues, our problems, we call upon Christ, don't we? That's between you and Him. It's a personal relationship between you and Him. A personal relationship with Christ is extremely important. It is key for you to understand who Christ is. Again, He is our great God and our Savior, as per Titus chapter 2, verse 13. But the Roman Catholic common good encourages you as a Christian to let go of your individual rights and beliefs and to think instead what is better for everyone. In other words, through its common good policy or belief, the Vatican's Pope is saying, forget your individual rights and your individual consciousness and believe what the Bible says, and rather think like us, Roman Catholics, and to follow the Pope instead of Christ. But Christ's followers follow Christ whithersoever he goeth. In Revelation chapter 14, verses 4 and 5, not whatsoever the Pope tells you. Remember that Roman Catholics considered the Pope as their Holy Father. Imagine that, which goes against Matthew chapter 23, verse 9. Roman Catholics will follow their human version of Holy Father, who is nothing else than a sinful, earthly, mortal human being. The Pope as the head of their church their Babylonian Roman Catholic Church. When Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 says clearly that Christ is the head of his church. Whatsoever the Pope tells you is precisely what Roman Catholics will believe in. That points to rule number 13, or the grand rule of the Vatican's Jesuits. This rule says, or the grand rule says, for an inferior readily to declare his assent and consent to his superior in act of obedience when he says, the snow is black or the crow is white. We should always be ready to accept this principle. I will believe that the white that I see is black. If the hierarchical church defines it as such. This is stated in the spirit exorcies of Saint, Saint Ignatius. He's no saint. Saint Ignatius, <laughs> page 141, by Ignatius de Loyola, who founded the so called Society of Jesus. It's, 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 they don't believe in Jesus Christ, they're simply the Jesuits. And Ignatius de Loyola founded the Jesuits in 1540 as a means to counterattack against the Protestant Reformation, which started 23 years earlier in 1517. In other words, what the Loyola is saying is, let us, being the Jesuits or the Vatican or the Babylon Roman Catholic Church, let us think for you instead says Ignatius de Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, Satan's human agents on earth. This common good garbage or nonsense from the Pope is simply the Vatican's way to control and to dominate your minds and your thoughts and your beliefs. The Vatican, which is home to Satan, is about controlling you it's about converting you to Roman Catholicism. 
It's about taking you away from God and to bring you instead to Satan with his Roman Catholicism. This is the same dragon or Satan who gives his power, seat, and great authority to the beast in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. And that beast or nation or kingdom is the Vatican, which is described in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, which includes verse 2, which we just read, and also verses 17 and 18 of the same chapter. Do not fall prey to Satan's Roman Catholicism, since the Vatican is telling you, forget about your individual rights, forget about your individual consciousness, and allow us, the Vatican, through our Roman Catholicism, do the thinking for you. Do that instead. Right, sure. When you obey the Pope, rather than the Christian God of the Bible, who rules the universe. That's, that's what it's all about with the Vatican. It's about controlling you, dominating you and your thoughts and your beliefs and your individual rights and your individual consciousness. That's the Vatican for you in a nutshell. Satan's home. That's what the Vatican is telling you through common good garbage and nonsense. That's what Vance and Roberts are telling you through their Roman Catholic social teaching. In the case of Roberts, it's through his Project 2025. In essence, the Vatican wants Christians to focus on what it says, it says what its common good initiative is all about, rather than what Christ says in the Bible. As shown in the video clip, paragraph 2188 of the man-made catechism of the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church states, in respecting religious liberty, there's no religious liberty with the Vatican, in respecting religious liberty and the common good of all, the common good of all, Christians should seek recognition of Sundays, and the church's holy days as legal holidays. These legal holidays include Xmas, Easter, Immaculate Conception, which uplifts Mary as being sinless, which goes against Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all of which are not commanded by God anywhere in the Bible, and neither is Sunday worship and rest commanded by God in the Bible. It's simply not there. Nowhere in the Bible does God command you to keep Sunday holy, but God does ask us to remember to keep holy His seventh day Sabbath, as per His seventh day Sabbath commandment in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. But the great majority of so called Christians reject God's holy seventh day Sabbath, since they have been taught to keep Sunday holy, or to rest on Sunday, or to attend Sunday worship services. And that brings us back to the video clip, whereby a man asked about what will happen to those who want to observe the biblical seven-day Sabbath or Saturday, and more accurately, from Friday evening at sundown to Saturday evening at sundown, since God starts and ends his days at sundown, not at midnight, which is a Roman invention. And again, the man in the video clip speaks about blue laws, which is another term for Sunday laws, when they will be reinstated. So watch that clip again and look at what the response was from the man wearing the tie. Pay attention to what he says. We are not obligated to satisfy every group under the sun. Who is we? Obviously, it's the Vatican. What about the liberty of consciousness of the individual who wants to remember to keep God's holy seven-day Sabbath as per God's fourth commandment in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11, which again identifies God as the creator who made heaven 
and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. The seven-day Sabbath commandment identifies God as a creator. Sunday rest and worship does not. In other words, accept Sunday worship or else, says the man wearing that tie. Again, he says, we are not obligated to satisfy every group under the sun. To all my brothers and sisters in the faith who observe God's holy seven-day Sabbath commandment, get ready. Revelation chapter 20 speaks of those who will be beheaded for not worshiping the Vatican's Pope or its image of the 501c3 government registered Sunday keeping churches or for not accepting the Vatican beast mark. And I will get to that later about the mark. We need to understand that God does not force anyone. God does not force anyone to follow his ways. He gives you that choice. He gives you that choice, but he does encourage you to choose life, and that life is Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, eternal life. John 14, verse 6, and only through Christ, not Shiva, Allah, Muhammad, or Buddha, or Mary for that matter, but only through Christ can we have access to God the Father, the ultimate source of all power. Amen to that. And again, God does not force you to follow him, but he does encourage you to follow everything that has to do with eternal life. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, God says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. God allows you to make choices. The freedom and individual right to make choices. But the Vatican's Pope says no. Not according to his common good initiative or philosophy. Again, for the common good of all, says the Vatican, Christians will need to observe Sunday and the Roman Catholic Church's versions of their brand of holidays, which are not commanded by God in the Bible. So what's the big deal about the Vatican Sunday? This is what the Vatican B says about its Sunday. Sunday is our mark of authority. It goes on to say very arrogantly, the church is above the Bible, if you can believe that, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. They transfer God's holy seven-day Sabbath to Sunday at the Council of La Laodicea, Canon number 29 in 364, under the papacy of Pope Liberius. And this is quoted in Catholic Record, London, Ontario, Canada, September 1st, 1923. The Vatican Beast states that Sunday is our mark. It's our mark, says the Vatican, about Sunday rest and worship. Hence the Vatican, the first beast, Described in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, along with verses 17 and 18 of the same chapter, says openly and publicly that Sunday is its mark, hence the mark of the beast, the beast being the Vatican. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, we read the following about the mark of the beast. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Worship. Worship is linked directly with the mark of the beast. If you accept Sunday 
as the Vatican or the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church's day of rest and worship, you will put the Pope and his Sunday rest and worship above God and his seven-day Sabbath. Thus, with your mind, which is again in your forehead where you make decisions, you will have decided again with your mind, which is in your forehead, to put the Pope's Sunday above God's seventh day Sabbath. And as a result, you will worship the Vatican's Pope rather than God. The mark of the beast is about worship. As we read in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, the worship of the beast. The beast is the Vatican. The head of the Vatican is the Pope. Worship has a religious connotation. Sunday worship has a religious connotation. The worship of the beast, the beast being the Vatican, has everything to do with worship. The worship of the beast according to Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. You worship who you obey. Those who will worship the beast, as we read in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, will accept the mark of the beast in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, as part of the Vatican beast false system of worship. Hence, this requires Sunday laws to be enforced in, or, in order for the masses to worship the Vatican's papacy or the Pope by accepting his mark, which the Vatican B says will be Sunday rest and worship. As we read in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, the mark of the beast and worship are linked together. And there's also Revelation chapter 16, verse 2, Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, and Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, which shows the link or the association in the same verse between the mark of the beast and worship. Thus, the vaccines are out of the picture. Thus, the RFID chip is out of the picture or a change in someone's DNA or a tattoo. None of these things have anything to do with worship. Remember that. Sunday, which will be the mark of the beast, again, when it will be enforced by law, with the beast being the Vatican, is directly linked to worship, including Sunday worship services, which will be made mandatory in fallen Christianity's attempt to draw closer to God when it will have the complete opposite effect since god since god asks us that we remember to keep holy his seventh day sabbath which christ says in mark chapter 2 verse 27 was made for man for all of humanity not just for the jews as some people will like to make you believe christ says it with his own mouth and he does not lie that the Sabbath was made for man, for all of humanity. Therefore, we ought to believe what God says. We ought to obey God rather than man, including the Pope. We ought to obey God rather than man, as per Acts chapter 5, verse 29. So people will be refrained from working on the first day of the week to do work or physical labor. But God says, to refrain from doing any physical labor or work on his seven-day Sabbath. So again, who is right? God with his seven-day Sabbath commandment or the Pope with his false papal Sabbath, if you want to call it as such. Again, please remember that at the Roman Catholic Council of Laodicea, as I mentioned before, in 364, Pope Liberius enforced Canon number 29, which stipulated that the seven-day Sabbath of God was to be transferred to Sunday. Sunday laws will be enforced to give homage to the Pope above God and his biblical seven-day Sabbath. Again, this is a matter of worship. Who you worship and the day 
of public worship. It's all about faith and obedience. But to who? Here are a few quotes showing that Sunday is strictly a Roman Catholic doctrine and that it is, does not come from God. It does not. Quote number one, Sunday is a Catholic institution and its claim to observance can be defended only on Catholic principles. From beginning to end of scripture, there's not a single passage that warrants the transfer of weekly public worship. Worship, there's that word again. From the last day of the week to the first. Who stated that? Ellen White? No. This was stated and quoted in the Catholic press, a Catholic, Roman Catholic organization in Sydney, Australia, August 1900. Quote number two, if Protestants would follow the Bible, they should worship God on the Sabbath day. That's the seventh day, which we call Saturday in the English language. In keeping the Sunday, in keeping the Sunday, they, being the Protestants, are following a law of the Catholic Church. They're following a Sunday law of the Catholic Church. Who quoted this? Again, Ellen White? No. This is quoted by Albert Smith, Chancellor of the Archdiocese of Baltimore, replying for the Cardinal in the letter of February 10th, 1920. So the Vatican's Roman Catholic Church admits that Sunday is their mark, that Sunday is their day of rest and worship. Again, the mark of the beast is linked to worship, Sunday worship. And the Protestant churches are tagging along as well by obeying their mother church, the Babylon Roman Catholic Church. As per Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, they're tagging along with Sunday as their day of worship as well because they came out of the mother church the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church, starting in 1517. So they kept, they being the Protestant churches, kept a lot of the feast days of the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church, including Sunday rest and worship. If you still believe that Sunday laws will not be passed, or that it's a conspiracy theory, or that Sunday laws do not represent the mark of the beast, then please consider the following statement. Please pay attention. This organization proposes in every possible way to aid in preserving Sunday as a civil institution. Our national security requires the active support of all good citizens in the maintenance of our American Sabbath. Sunday laws must be enforced. Sunday laws must be enforced. Again, who quoted this? Ellen White? No. This is quoted as the principles contained in the constitution of the original organization, then called the American Sabbath Union, cited in the Lord's Day Alliance 25th Report, 1913, page 6. Again, it says in that statement, Sunday laws must be enforced. And based on the video clips that we saw, they will. Get ready, but reject them. Remember Trump's words from the first video clip that we saw. You put faith back. You put religion back into our country. It's going to be a much better place. It will be a much better place for Sunday keeping Christians, but when they will accept Sunday as the false papal Sabbath, as the mark of the beast, they will receive the seven last plagues of a just but offended God in Revelation chapter 16. The Pope and the 501c3 government registered Sunday keeping churches are leading deceived Christians 
straight to the plagues of God. But you don't have to. Obey God, put your faith in Him, and keep His holy Ten Commandments of love, including God's holy Seventh-day Sabbath commandment. Do so, do so, and you will be in God's good favor. Again, we ought to obey God rather than men, including the Pope, including Trump, including Vance, including Kevin Roberts. May the love, peace, and grace of the Most High God, who is Lord of the Sabbath, and who does not want you to accept the mark of the Vatican beast, be with you in these tumultuous prophetic end times. So be it. Amen and amen and amen.